I was really resistant to doing anything approaching a collection because I was working on a, a long piece about James Baldwin and Richard Pryor, and they kept arguing with each other about space in the book, and um, I don't blame them. And uh, so whenever I would try to do what I felt was a collection, it would just come out jumbled or the situation would be bad or... Um, so there were versions of it, and um, it was really Dave Eggers, who's the owner, publisher of McSweeney's, um, who talked to me about different kinds of writing I had done. And um, one day I was walking with a fr friend, and um, he mentioned the editor saying something, well, sounds like Hilton should divide the book. Uh, maybe divide the book by race. And I said, oh, that's a bad idea, but if I wrote a book about race, it would be called this. And we laughed, ha, ha, ha. And it suddenly started to come together, cohere in my mind, but there was one section, the very long first section, that um, I had written to go with something I had written previously about the Silent Twins. Um, the friendship of the two men was going to replicate the, the, a piece that I had published in the New Yorker about the two sisters who had developed their own language in a, in a largely white environment in England, I mean Wales. And um, I think David Eggers is a brilliant editor because he read it and he said the first part, which was about the friendship, um, he said I want to wallpaper my house with it and then I get to the twins and it's a different thing um, entirely, like conjoined twins, you have to separate them so they can live. And the minute he said it, because it always bug bugged me, I didn't know what was wrong. And it takes an editor, really, I think everyone needs one, to say, it's just a little line, and sort of the top of my head came off, and I saw the white girl in the story. She had um, been in uh, Louise Brooks, uh, a, a great friend of mine whom you knew, and um, she was just the laziest person I ever knew, but also one of the more captivating people I've ever known. And she just appeared. And when she came, to, came into the story, the two male characters were able to have a, a, a narrative drama that they were going towards and then separating from. I just... Um, and people have asked about this, the people in the story, and um, it's fictionalized, but I did show it to my friend, and he loves me very much, and he said, it's like a train, you can't stop it. I have no issue with it at all. Um, he's an artist as well, so he would you know, write stories about me, and I didn't recognize myself at all, but I was thrilled he'd written the story. So I felt an immense amount of freedom editorially and personally. And that's how I was able to make a book. I was like, oh, it's sort of like if you go back to great things like um, Joan Didion's The White Album or um, Notes of a Native Son, there's always this sort of centerpiece um, essay that really sort of ties the other ideas together. And it was, I wrote the first part very quickly. Um, it's very long, but it was something that once I finished it, I realized that I had written the last part of the book first, um, which was about memory, and then the, um, the first part of it was about the memory of these people. So that's how it happened, and I, I missed them terribly, so it was a way of being with them again. And um, uh, seeing them again. Um, 